It's a rainy day once again in the colony, and Gray is spending the morning in the lab, lest his rust grow worse. Some opportunistic hunting of curious alpaca is broken by the appearance of Beryl Gawain, a dwarf from the neighboring Barra Pact. Naked and armed with only a wooden club, he fails to provide much of a challenge for Grey, but the brain has an idea. Grey has more pressing concerns, however, when the meat from the mad rat rots away, as the storage room is much too warm to properly refrigerate it. Even with two coolers, he's going to have to scale it down to keep Lottie's food cold. Though, as far as Lottie is concerned, any sufficient pile of meat in her territory is dinner, kibble or otherwise. And while Grey focuses on cooling things down, the brain has been sweltering in the back room, growing strange, squid-like tadpoles in its pool. Heal root is a naturally occurring herbal medicine that is abundant on ring worlds, and whilst Grey has little use for it, the brain directs him to stockpile some for later. Less naturally occurring are the chunks of spacecraft that occasionally land in the area, relics from the numerous failed attempts to find safer harbour in orbit. Grey attempts to spruce up the place with an excellent filing cabinet to help his research efforts, but he's not quite skilled enough to craft one, so settles for good quality instead. The household is beginning to get very messy, so it's time to clean up, followed by some light furniture rearranging and a fresh addition to the kitchen. The domestication of Lottie continues as Grey attempts unsuccessfully to teach her to guard the house. Nevertheless, she agrees to understand some of the basic principles, with the bribe of food and a new dinner bowl in the rec room. More substantial research requires a more substantial research desk, which is one thing that Grey expected during his rearranging. A trio of Moon Elves arrives with wares to sell, though their goods are of little interest to a settlement quite this unusual. Nevertheless, Grey secures the interior of the household and strikes up a brief conversation. Soon after, however, a severe heatwave causes the cooling to overtax the power supply, and forces the visitors to flee to cooler climes. Grey barely has time to celebrate the completion of his latest research, when a lone give Yankee named Dratic from the Abago Nation arrives. Seeing its chance, the brain instructs Grey to apprehend, not kill, this latest provocateur. Dratic is armed with a steel knife, but even rusted, Grey proves to be a considerable challenge for him, and he is ultimately captured successfully. What transpires next must be a dreamlike experience of nightmarish proportions, as Grey carries Doratig to the dark back room, lying him down by the whirring generator. Once his wounds are tended sufficiently, Grey extracts one of the squid-like tadpoles from the brain's pool, and applies it in horrifying fashion to Doratig. A short while later, it completely subsumes his brain in physiology, and the colony is joined by its first edition, with the blue-skinned lipid, Cesdisk. Fully in tune with the brain's psionic urgings, Cesdisk takes the lead on future research and crafting, leaving Grey with most of the heavy lifting. But in exchange for serving as nervous tissue for the colony, Cesdisk requires regular food and a comfortable shelter, so it's time for a new bedroom. Construction has barely even started, however, when an Ibex ram is driven mad, much like the rat before it, so Grey and Cestic cement their partnership with some open-range shooting. And with that, they close the day out with Cestic gingerly cleansing the rust from Grey, finally returning him to the hue that earned his name. Come now, dear viewer. Tell me your wish. Is it for money? Maybe for power? Or perhaps you hope for simpler things like 
bonus content, and exclusive streams with your favorite content creator. Really? That last one, huh? Well, that's easy, just head over to patreon.com slash lying. Oh, I kind of expected more. <laughs>